Good afternoon and welcome to the May 10th, 2022 meeting of the Comox Valley Recreation Commission. And of course, we want to start the meeting by acknowledging we're conducting this meeting as most of our meetings on the traditional territory, uh, unceded traditional territory of the Comox First Nation. Um, and uh, before we go to the management report for receipt, I'd just like to, uh, just a quick follow-up uh, that we have uh, a delegation last time uh, questioning some of the health policy and um, we've done a little bit of thinking, but we don't have anything formal for the commission, but maybe under um, new business, we could put in a request for uh, on the management report to come back with some of the answers to those questions. Um, when with that, uh, the management report is up for receipt. Thank you. All in favor, any questions? Sorry, any questions? Director McCall. Thanks, Chair. Yeah, just a question about the first item on the management report. Um, I see there's an action that the contract's been awarded, and I can only assume that that's for the sports field study. Um, and I'm just wondering if there is a further update on how the progress for the artificial turf field is going in terms of site location and the other items on the on the recommendation. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, Mr. Chair and directors, I can respond by saying that uh, the, uh, the work being done is a collaboration with our municipal partners to come back to the commission with a review of the previous recommendations to confirm what the um, status is you know, under the current conditions. So recommendations will be coming forward. The recommendations on turf field will be bundled with recommendations with respect to the aquatic study and other works that's being done. The intention being that we will be able to come back to the uh, rec commission in 2023 with a uh, strategic planning session of, of the commission to identify the priorities with respect to new capital improvements that might be part of uh, your vision for, for recreation and the service in the future. Me follow up, Dr. McCollum. Um, yeah, I'm just kind of processing what that means exactly. So, <laughs> what we're what we would be considering. Uh, I mean, what the next board will be considering is um, 2023 strategic planning. So, what kind of implementation timelines are we talking about? Yeah, as, as you're aware, this is an election year. And um, so bringing forward recommendations on acting things as as the commitments for the work plan and budgeting for 2022 is, is well underway. We, we won't see any tangible actions in 2022. We thought it would be best uh, with, a, with a new rec commission being established that uh, a priority for them would be in the new year to take all the recommendations of these various reports and studies that are being done, which will have a, a great impact on the future for recreation in the Valley. What are your priorities in terms of new fields, use pools, um, the upgrade of the existing ones? Major decisions will be made that will be the result of these studies. So that will be formulated and brought to the recreation soon into their new new um, new terms in the uh, early part of 2023 for decisions as to how to move forward. Sorry, and uh, just one last question then. So uh, this work is proceeding and then um, when the next Recreation Commission meets, would there be some options available or is the direction whether or not to continue to consider site, like where will um, the decision process be when the next board meets? Because um, if we're, I mean, the aquatic, um, the aquatic study is underway, and I assume there will be some type of recommendations that come out of that study to be considered at strategic planning. And I'm just wondering if that's kind of the point at which we're hoping that the artificial turf would be at um, at the same time. Absolutely, yes. We hope that there's there's uh, sort of an, a, an equivalent understanding of what the needs are for new fields within the valley, the, the preferred locations, the types of use that they would be accommodating, those kinds of things. As with, as with our pools, we have an existing complement of pools. Is that adequate for the needs for the future? Uh, can we rely on them given their age and, uh, and their state and re respect to the demands of the public? Are they suitable or otherwise? These are the kinds of questions that we hope the study to give good solid recommendations for the recreation 
commission to consider in 2023 and establish their priority as to how we will accomplish the new infrastructure or the upgrade of the existing infrastructure to meet the needs of the community. Okay, thanks for yeah. that. Yeah, and if I may, um, because Dr. McCollum kind of pressed on the, uh, the timeline, which makes sense to explain, but is there any chance that for some of these pieces, um, that we have, you know, we'll have a, a, meet, a last meeting in September. So is there, might the current board get a preview and maybe weigh in or anything like that, that uh, that could set up a better conversation for the next board? Yes, absolutely. As these studies are complete and the results come forward, those will be shared with the Recreation Commission. So you will get them in real time as they are completed. Yeah. Thank you. Dr. Hamir. Thank you, Chair. Um, just speaking to item number two, the um, adult ice user public engagement plan. Um, I note that uh, staff said that stakeholder meetings had been completed, and I was just wondering um, how the um, the survey went and, and if we got uh, um, a good response from the public on, on the survey. Thank you. And um, Mr. Chair, I'll just refer to Jennifer Zabidden to respond to that. Over to you, Jennifer. Thank you. Through the Chair. Um, just trying to recall the best we can, I believe we had 1,500 people respond to the survey, which is a, a good number for such a survey. The, the actual user group meetings were attended very well. There's two of them, the stakeholder meetings, and both were attended, well, the first one very well, and the second one's quite well. Um, lots of input certainly provided by the stakeholders. And um, just sort of as a final update, the draft report has just been received by the staff. So staff are doing a final walkthrough. And then that's actually the first of the, these various studies and assessments. That's the first report that's going to come forth um, out of all of them. Thank you. Any further questions or comments on the management report? There being none, all in favor of receipt. Unanimous, thank you. That takes us to the Recreation Grant Service Governance uh, for Receipt. Grant and Amir, thank you. Over to staff. Thank you very much, Chair. And I'll refer to Jennifer Zabidden to present this report and answer your questions. Over to you. Thank you, Russell. Through the chair, I'll just wait till the PowerPoint is up. Here it comes. Thank you, Jake. Through the chair and to the directors, good afternoon. Staff are here today to introduce the Comox Valley Recreation Commission bylaw to expand its mandate to include the administration and operation of the Recreation Grant Service Function 600. This Recreation Grant Service was originally established specifically to support the Courtney Outdoor Memorial Pool, and it continues to do so. The purpose of the service was subsequently expanded to also include the provision of contributions to the cost of recreation programs provided by public authorities and nonprofit organizations. And this service could be something that could be delivered within the community services via recreation services. The Comox Valley Rec Complexes, the Comox Valley Track and Field Services, and the Exhibition Ground Services and the Recreation Grant Service share many similarities in, such, in areas such as the recreation opportunities, operations, and joint agreements. Encompassing all four as a recreational links or hubs in site, the mandated by the commission will provide consistency and commonality of recreation services. For these reasons, the, the commission may consider expanding its mandate to include matters related to the rec grant services. Now this falls nicely in line with the rec commission strategic goals, community partnerships, the social fabric of our communities and the health and well-being of citizens depend on solid and sustainable community partnerships. The Recreation Grant Service is for the community partnerships for rec programs provided by public authorities and nonprofit organizations. This service provides grants to all municipal partners, organizations, as well as many nonprofits that are regional in nature. And the second goal that it also um, is part of is accessibility, ensuring access to recreational services. And so the last thing on this is while this report presents the commission with an option to expand the mandate of the commission to include matters relating to the recreation grant service, the commission is not required to proceed with the recommendation in this report. Alternate directions to staff could be provided to conduct further analysis if required. And so on that note, staff are happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Over to Dr. Grief. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I have some hesitation around this. I think that uh, that sometimes when we amalgamate all these things under into one one basket, um, that some of the subtleties are lost. Uh, the exhibition uh, ground is is one where I think that perhaps you know there's a little bit of a a, a difference now between uh, you know the focus on sports and uh, and and the exhibition ground function. So it's a cultural thing, I guess. My question um, is, Cumberland is a part of Function 600, is it not? Uh, of the recreational grant, I believe they are. I'm gonna just ask Jake uh, Martins to answer the question. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought you had an automatic. Through the chair, uh, yes. <laughs> so, so that that changes the the you know the the whole makeup of this board. If Cumberland's going to is are you only going to sit here for no, function six hundred? Cumberland, Cumberland is on the recreation commission. They're just not um, present today because Chair Kessler is away, and I think her alternate director is um, on a tour. And and the, the weighted voting stays the same. Yeah, we've decided on that. Okay. Well, you know, I, I just I just I have a, a feeling uh, about this. It's just like it, as I say, too many eggs in one basket kind of a scenario. I probably streamlines things for staff. I can see that. But as I say, you know, I think that uh, sometimes the subtleties are lost. Thank you. Thank you, Director Grieven. Oh, Dr. Grant, who are you? Oh, oh no, Dr. Me. Yeah. Um, just a question maybe to chair or to the staff. Um, the idea of bringing uh, this uh, grant function under the auspices of the Rec Commission, I don't recall, um, are, are we actually amalgamating? I, I understood that some of, most of these grants were decided at the board level and that we were just moving to this, this decision to the Recreation yeah. Commission. So nothing's really changed, or if, if staff could confirm. Yeah, it's still a separate service. Um, I mean, staff can win, but your assumptions are correct, in my opinion, that this is still a function that stands alone, but would come under the authority here. So a bit like we did with exhibition. And I'd like to, before I pass uh, Dr. Grant, um, I, I did ask to see if we could look at that, and partly because currently where that function exists, in my opinion, is in the middle of the intense budget season, and we see it once in a year. And I think what we discussed, like Director Maureen talked about, this could would give an opportunity to, to actually develop some strategies. Do we want to support more low income? Like those discussions never happen where it currently sits because it just shows up as a once a year item. Director Grant? Yeah, thank you. So um, I guess I have a few concerns on this, and maybe I don't really understand what we're doing here, but when I look at this, it looks to me like a bit of a grant and aid program. And of course, we don't have a grant and aid program in, in Comox. We actually have a no grant and aid program there. And I'm just wondering how we go through this and like what the cap would be on how much you could get, who would get to run a program, who the winners and losers are, how do you apply? Like, I think there's a whole lot of detail that needs to be looked at before you just jump into this. Um, you know, I can see like, like just as an example, at our last meeting, we had a paddle, uh, a uh, dragon boat group from Victoria ask us for $10,000 to run an event in Comox. Well, we don't do that kind of stuff. Like we're not a funding agency. And because we opened the door a little bit, we're seeing people now lining up all the time looking for how they can get in and, and get their money. So I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about that. And I guess maybe the, the details come out later, but... Um, you know, I, I don't think we're like, I don't know whatever happened in the world, but back in back in the day, you would put your program together, you would go and try and fund it. And if you needed just a little more, then you'd come and ask. Now you, we're the first stop all the time. And, and I think that that's really backwards, to be honest with you. And that's why we don't, we just don't do grant aids in Comox because the lineup just gets out the door all the time. 
take, take the ground. I'll press it over to staff. But uh, yeah, just, just this is a political debate, yeah. not a debate between politicians and staff. It's not staff aren't yeah. promoting this. There's no suggestions or otherwise that the program is being changed. It's just where it's being administered. But if you want some history on this particular grant, I can refer those questions to Doug Marzo. It would be good to refresh our memory because it is true. It's not a new program. It's been in place for a long time. Doug? Yeah, right. Thank you through the chair to directors. Won't dive too far back into the history because it really goes right back to the beginnings of the court and the outdoor pool, but rather look at the recent 10 years or so. Um, so some of the suggestions are that uh, groups do come forward on an annual basis uh, to apply for grant money related to recreation. Uh, the groups are fairly consistent year to year and a lot of it's operationally based funding. But is that the director's discretion during those meetings if they choose to fund and to what level they choose to fund? Typically, you'll see a staff report with the requests and uh, the recommendations from staff. And to some extent, we do vet them to uh, if we see any major increases from groups that have uh, received funding in the past, we will ask them to identify why and go through that vetting process. Furthermore, the CVRD does have a grants page that has a rural community grants, a recreation grants, and our arts and culture grants. So we'll direct the organization to which grant would be most suitable based on the information they've provided or redirect them once we do see an application. So there is somewhat of a vetting process in place. Um, I think that's the recent history of that. We've seen a lot of it of partial support for many uh, different recreation programs and clubs. And uh, being that all uh, participants pay into this grant service, it does tend to be a catch-all and we don't encourage these groups to go to the individual municipalities, especially if they're not in that jurisdiction, because <laughs> we give them the understanding that the contribution they're receiving is already a region-wide initiative from this grant. That doesn't mean they can't go to municipalities to ask, but they're not encouraged to continue to go down that route. Thanks for the history, Doug. Um, Dr. Hermier, yeah, come. Yeah, just to say that I'm I'm in support of moving this to the uh, Recreation Commission. I think, as the chair mentioned, this is exactly this is more of a we have more time to be thoughtful about the uh, the uh, items that are are approved. So you know, just to speak to some of the questions from my fellow directors. I recall, I think one of our first meetings as when we were first elected was, you know, deciding how much money UROC was getting, how much the Mountain um, Center was getting. So it's exactly from my understanding, it's exactly the same process, but we're just doing it at this commission rather than at the full board where we have some more time to be deliberate. So uh, I'll be recommending. Back to Hillian. Thanks, Chair. I'd also like to speak in favor. I think that uh, because it's the same representatives here as at the larger board, any subtleties or uh, innate knowledge that people bring will be there. But we have the added uh, involvement of the school district at this table. And I think um, this type of uh, initiative actually uh, holds promise for bringing the school district re representative more into the dialogue, uh, uh, given that the, the knowledge and expertise they might bring. So those are a couple of reasons to support this. And uh, I don't think we lose anything. Um, I think uh, the point that there's more time to engage in, in these uh, considerations uh, makes good sense. Thanks. Thank you. And back to Director Grant. And so I'm just wondering if there's any thought and uh, actually Director Swift brought this to my attention at our last meeting in Comox was, do we, actually ask them where else they've gone and tried to get grant money. Like we have organizations come that they could just, but we're the low hanging fruit. So it's easy to come and ask us. Right. And so do we look at their financial statements and see if they actually have the money or like, there should be some criteria, I guess. And, and for those that fit within that criteria, that's probably a good thing. But I think that what we find is there's a lot of these groups that we just become the easiest target. So that's where you go. Yeah. And, and I don't think that's the intention. So if I may, because that's also a political comment, I think our CEO would say, but uh, what I would say is the rec commission is going to do their strategic planning uh, next year. And exactly your questions that you ask would be perfectly, because you're right, like 
is there a policy, refine the policy around the grant so that it's clear to people that that's the one-stop shop. So you don't, you know, those are, are would be great topics to explore. And also the level of requisition, how much uh, participants want to put into this. Uh, Dr. Mori? Yeah, not to belabor the point, um, I'm in favor. And I think for that reason, um, so that we can actually almost tailor these grants to the needs of the community for recreation and, and not just have it added to a, an agenda that, you know, we have to um, go through all that thought process in with an, a loaded agenda on an, a variety of things and and we can um, we can build it into uh, the commission's uh, strategic planning. And I think hopefully it would actually help the problem with people. I mean, it seems like the same people come and it's almost like it's just a rollover of funding without really much, um, you know, thought. And, and, and as I mentioned in one of the past meetings, there's probably lots of groups out there that don't even know about it that could really benefit from, from these grants, but, you know, they're not in the loop and maybe this is an opportunity to be able to, to really focus on the recreation aspect and not just have it all lumped in um, into the big pot. Thanks. Thank you. Um, good discussion on it. Actually, longer than I, I thought, but lots of good comments. So um, I think I'll call the question on it. Um, so just on receipt to start. Uh, in favor? Okay. And there is a recommendation. Hillian and Hamir, any discussion? No. And uh, all in favor? Anyone opposed? Okay. So that passes. Um, the next one will be the British Columbia 55 plus games over to uh, for receipt. Oh, did I skip one? Oh, the capital project. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> over to staff. Thank you. And Jennifer Zabin will introduce this report and answer your questions. Thank you. Through the chair, to the directors. There we go. Um, staff are here to provide the Comox Valley Rec Commission with an amendment to the capital projects plan for the Comox Valley Rec Complex's function 645. The proposed amendments to the 2022 to 2026 capital projects plan continues to be focused on the mitigation of minimal future closures and related service and revenue impact to complete service improvements. Asset management and the service enhanced projects have been identified through the recent life cycle assessments of both the sports and aquatic centers. Unfortunately, due to the wait time for the aquatic center main and leisure pool filters and the need for the facility closures to complete the work, this project cannot be achieved within the fiscal 2022 year. The longer it takes for us to get the filters, the more we get back into our busy season, the less chance there is for any kind of downtime in the pool to complete this work. <clears throat> so as we get closer back into the fall, the opportunity is not there. So the request is to amend the capital plan project list for the fiscal 2025 year to include the aquatic center main and leisure pool filters, which is a $250,000 uh, item. Then, then again, supporting strategic goal one of asset management, amending the capital plan project list for fiscal year 2022 to include the sports center arena one stereo system, which was brought forth from year 2023. The sports center main pool lobby heat and cool unit also brought forth from year 2023. And the Sports and Aquatic Center, Sports Center Arena 1 and 2 LED lighting upgrades <laughs> brought forth from year 2025. So that total is equivalent to 246,000 with a touch of breathing space. There's no financial impacts for the 2022 with this capital project plan amendment. At a later date, staff will be bringing forth the budget amendment report to reflect the change of the addition of the filters into year 2025. Lastly, with the lengthy wait times and back orders of equipment we're experiencing, staff wish to stay on top of the asset management and may need to shift other projects forwards and backwards in the future within the five-year financial plan in order to get work done with a minimal effects to pool closures. There's nothing more frustrating for our patrons and our staff than planning work projects and completing the prep for the new project, having parts apart, waiting for a part, and then your equipment doesn't arrive and now your facilities and pieces and your opening is, is delayed. 
Um, the other worst case scenario is that only part of the equipment arrives on time. And that's just the fact with today in the in the COVID world waiting on parts. So trying to, to be quick to do a strategic switch, switch if we need to, to get other work done that we, we find out those parts are available in the market, we can get those sooner. So we want to look to always sort of stay on top of that. So over the next five years, you may see staff coming back in other times again, doing these same requests when there's a hiccup for getting parts. And probably the last example I would like to give you is, is that um, the uh, doors for the aquatic center, the emergency doors, they were ordered in 2020 of July and they arrived in um, June of 2022 or 2021. So just how long it's taking for things to get for staff is very difficult. So on that note, staff are available for questions. Thank you, Jennifer. Dr. Hamir. Thanks, Chair, and thanks, Jennifer, fully in support of, of your recommendation. My uh, question and comment was just um, understanding the, the list and, and how these capital project plans come into place. And I was trying to think, uh, it's been a while since I've seen you know this list, and I was trying to remember why or why it's been so long. And I have, it's probably because of COVID. We were so focused on um, the grants that we were getting and how to spend those for the opening and, and up, upgrade of all of our um, of our sites specific to those grants. So I'm just wondering if staff could give a background on how you come up with the capital projects plans. Is this primarily a staff, um, you know, focused, um, do staff bring forward ideas? And then is there a way to for um, this table to add any uh, uh, potential items? And if so, when, when would that best happen? Through the chair. So these, the capital planning usually comes through fruition through the facility condition assessments. That's a big piece, a uh, big uh, item. The age of the facilities, the technology that's currently in the facilities or not in the facilities, given the age. And then that's in combination with all sort of climate action and sustainability um, policies and, and um, uh, procedures through, their, through our organization. Um, that's sort of the primary way that we, we've, we bring the focus together on how to move things forward. And then the process is through the budget, budget process. So that's a great time to, to be um, requesting or adding in um, Okay, thanks. Right. Maybe, I mean, for the 2023, I guess, strategic planning, um, one of the pieces of equipment I, I think is, is missing from probably both the sports center and the aquatic center is a water bottle refilling station. It's not something that I've seen and um, would love to sort of, you know, as we talk about sustainability, reducing water bottles, um, that would be nice to see. So, but I'll, you know, unless you've got a, any other ideas where to put that. Thank you, Dr. Amir, for the comments. And um, yeah, I think we it's been about probably 18 months since uh, we saw the uh, facility condition assessment and the asset management planning. Uh, Jennifer, do you have further remarks on the, the specific requests or? Through the chair, um, the staff would like to, to uh, let everyone know that there, there is a water bottle, bottle filling station in arena one at the sports center right when you come through the slider doors and you look to the right and there's also one in the sports center pool uh, right by the hot tub so needing to know where they are and, and perhaps staff can improve on signage or where those are and at the aquatic center there's also one um, on the pool deck uh, so it might be maybe that triggers us to get better signage yeah, That's I mean, true. coming up to the next item on the agenda where we have events happening, perhaps, you know, having those facilities in a lobby might might be a bit more conducive and for, for general public. But thanks. thanks. I'm sure staff will, will yeah. look at that. Thank you, yes. Dr. Amir. Any further comments or questions mm -hmm. on the on the on what I call the switcheroo item? We're basically still completing the same projects, just different timeline. Nobody, so on receipt, all in favor? And someone wants to move the recommendation? Thank you. And all in favor? And that passes. Thank you to staff for the report. One more, I was jumping the gun a bit on that one. The British Columbia 55 plus games for receipt. Elian and Brieve, thank you. For thank you, and Jennifer Zabidden will introduce this uh, proposal and, uh, and answer your questions as well. 
through the chair to the directors. The purpose of this report is to present an opportunity to proceed with a joint application between the CVRD and the City of Cam River to host either the 2024, 25, or 20, 2026 uh, BC 55 plus games. On average, 3,500 to 4,000 participants from around BC compete in a minimum of 20 sports as selected by the host community and approved by the BC Senior Games Society. A host region must be able to host a minimum of 20 different sport events. And there's some uniqueness of these games um, because it does include some typical winter activities such as curling and hockey. As an age-friendly community, these would be a great fit to host these games to celebrate the older adults who are so inspirational in their dedication to fitness and excellence. This also falls nicely in line with the Recreation Commission strategic goals, partnerships, willing to partner across jurisdictions, accessibility, citizens having access to recreational opportunities, and volunteering to promote involvement in the community activities. Included in the joint bid application to host the games must be a resolution from the CVRD board and the City of Canberra River Council indicating support for the bid application. This resolution will include a one-time commitment of a minimum of 60,000 financial contribution in addition to at least the 55,000 of an in-kind support. So that in-kind support can be facilities, equipment, or staff time, or all of all three. The BC Senior Game Society provides funding to the host society towards the successful operations of the 55 plus BC games through two grants. They provide a portion of the participant and supporter registration fees and sport fees. And the bid application must be submitted to the BC Senior Game Society by June 30th of 2022. So that's pretty quick around the corner. And lastly, the 55 plus games joint bid application will also be subject to the approval of adjacent municipalities and the school district 71 for facility uses. The city of Campbell River will provide this request for the approval to the city of Courtney, the town of Comox, the village of Cumberland, and to the school district 71. And I believe that's already been done. So on that note, staff are happy to answer questions. Thank you, Jennifer. Dr. term has a question. Great, thank you, Chair. Uh, I was curious with the joint application, is that a common practice that uh, a couple communities host together? Through the Chair, yes, very common. It provides more uh, opportunity for, for more athletes to go. So as mm -hmm. soon as you have two curling rinks, you can have that many more right. events and participants. That's great, thank you. Director Hillian. Thanks, Chair. As a matter of fact, uh, this is so common that uh, we've done it once before. I believe it was in 2010 that Campbell River and uh, Comox Valley co-hosted. And uh, unfortunately, I'm old enough that I participated in those games. Uh, <laughs> but um, this is a wonderful cultural event. Um, it has all sorts of economic benefits as well. And you get classic moments uh, like occurred in one games where um, a woman who was about 85 was the only competitor in her swimming competition and uh, would have won the gold medal, but she was disqualified for a lane violation. <laughs> um, anyway, I, I think uh, this is something that we should heartily endorse and uh, I thank staff for bringing it forward. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Arlene, for that tidbit of history. Dr. Hamir. Thanks, Chair, Thanks, Karen. I'm, I'm gonna echo that. Um, I'm also in support. I think it would be something, you know, wonderful for our community to look forward to. Um, and uh, actually, uh, Director Hillian just answered my question is um, if we had, when was the last time we had ever hosted? So it sounds like it's been a little bit of a while. Um, staff have highlighted some of the, I guess, infrastructure needs that would be need to be in place in terms of transportation and health. I'm just wondering, you know, if this bid is successful, um, is what is the normal sort of procedure for rollout? Do we get like an organizing committee? I'm thinking the hoteliers will also need to be brought on side and probably some of the, um, you know, different sports uh, groups would need to be brought on side. Um, do staff know like what, what the plan is or are we kind of waiting to see until we're successful and then roll out, roll out a plan? Through the chair, should the joint bid be, be accepted for 2024 or 2025 or 2026? The next steps then is the BC, um, BC Games uh, Society. They then put together, a, they put a call out for, um, I guess, applicants to be on the committee. And then so in part on that committee, there'll be staff from each municipality 
but also committee members from, from the Comox Valley and from the city of Courtney. And then the BC uh, Game Society, they help, they help um, move the games forward. So that's the next step from here is put together a, a, an organizing committee. committee. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, back to McCall. Yeah, I'm also as part of this, I, I think it's a great event to host in our, our community and I, I can't really see a big downside. I, I'm curious about how the, um, both the, well, the cash contribution, it's, I think that's probably fairly straightforward, but in terms of the on in-kind support, I assume that there would be facilities um, that are, would not be CVRD owned or um, administered under our, um, our commission that would maybe fall into that. And I'm just wondering if that's, um, if that's a complexity or if that's understood and not an issue. Where is that? Through the chair, um, each municipality receives the same the same request from the city of Canberra for the bid. So when it comes to the in-kind for the facilities, each municipality will be required to provide X amount of in-kind for their facilities. And so that'll be, that'll come to their respective um, council and, and board for request. And do you know if that would be in addition to what the CVRD is being asked to provide or um, would that be a portion of, um, because the way I understood this was that there was an overall amount that was expected and the CVRD and Campbell River are um, splitting that, that in half. Um, but is it further divvied up then between the municipalities? Is that? Right, yeah, through the chair, current understanding is the 30,000 financial contribution would not be extended to the municipalities or recommending to the rec grants, which everyone pays into here. So there wouldn't be that ask. And the 55,000 of dean value would be determined based on the venue. So for example, if the Lewis Center was gone for that whole weekend, it'd be a loss of programming, you know, staffing costs would package that up and we'd package our rinks up and come over package whatever they need to package up. And that all combined would be the $55,000. So it's really, the decision's really about is whether you want to delay your programming or cancel your program potentially through those four days to allow this activity to happen and then continue to support it with your staff resources that would regularly operate those facilities. And looking at the holistic approach of whichever municipalities came under their umbrella, can make that decision to combine it to 55,000, which won't take very long to uh, achieve as a group hosting over 20 events. So we're not too concerned that, that we won't be making that deep value of 55,000, but yeah, it's really combined. Okay, that makes sense. Thanks for that. Thank you. Any further questions or comments on this event? There being none on receipt, all in favor? Thank you. Yeah, that's unanimous. And the recommendation. Move it. Thank you. Okay, back to Grieve and Moray. And any further questions or comments? House of Second Sober Thought. <laughs> no. All in favor? Okay. And then you want to oppose one opposed? Oh, that was not opposed. Okay. Thank you. So that passes. And I understand Dr. Grieve may have something under new business. Next. Thanks very much, Mr. Chair. After hearing uh, uh, Director Hillian there uh, participating in the uh, 2010 games, uh, I thought I'd add a little more historical context. Uh, I have before me the Join the Games, which is the official theme song for the BC Summer Games uh, for 1981. Uh, this song was uh, recorded uh, uh, for the games in uh, August 27, 28, and 29th, and 30th, and represented the first time ever they actually had a contest for the theme song. And uh, a local, uh, a local uh, resident, Evan Grieve, uh, actually uh, wrote the winning song. It was produced by, uh, by Brian Morissette at the Blue Room Studio with uh, Tracy Branch doing the engineering. And uh, so we don't need to go for another new theme song. I'm just putting it out there that, you know, this, this particular, this is a 45 folks for anybody out there. 
It's also available in eight track. <laughs> That's great. So uh, it's also uh, there's only I think surviving. Uh, uh, the, there's only, I think, 20 surviving editions of this 45 record. This one has been signed by the author, and I'd like to present it to our chair. Oh. Thank you. Um, one more, just one more little thing. Of course, uh, <laughs> the, the author of the song would be more than thrilled to perform it at the games as well. Thank you. Oh, we will take, we will bank this as an in-kind contribution towards the 55,000 that we were referencing earlier. Join the games, join the games. There's too much to do and see to mention it by name, et cetera, et cetera. So that sounds really good. And because it's a 55 plus, everybody will already know the song, right? They don't worry. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Gray, for that. That's awesome. We'll try to uh, get it off vinyl and to some digital format as well. Um, and, and I would be remiss, actually, while we were talking about events, that the Comox Valley Hiss will sing the Mini World Cup uh, next weekend. And we've got people coming all the way from Salt Spring Island, Port Hardy, to Tofino, Euclid, all over the island. So that's uh, over a thousand kids coming down to the valley. Oh, Dr. Alien. Sorry, I missed it. Thanks, Chair. I'd just like to speak to the uh, new business uh, item that uh, you, you indicated uh, earlier on. That I'd like to move that we request a staff report in response to the delegation that appeared before the board, I believe it was March 15th, in relation to um, COVID restrictions on recreation facilities. Thank you for proposing to formalize that. Uh, seconder for that. Uh Thank you, Dr. Grant. And, and if I could just speak to it, um, uh, I don't presuppose that um, um, through either through staff or through the commission that uh, uh, we necessarily agree with uh, what was presented, but I think we, we owe a substantial delegation a response. And uh, um, if we can have some sort of a cursory staff report that gives us an opportunity to, uh, to speak to it uh, so that the, the, those members of the community do actually get a formal response from this uh, commission, I think that's appropriate. Thank you for formalizing the request. Um, anybody wants to speak to the, the motion? Okay, and that I'll call it in question then, all in favor? Anyone opposed? And that passes. Thank you, Dr. Hillian. And there's music happening. It's quite festive today at the Rec Commission. Uh, yeah. Oh, is that the song? <laughs> I doubt it. But um, okay, so with that, we do have an in camera item. Uh, so, motion to move in camera. Amir and Grant, all in favor. And thank you. We will head into 